What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Logic Bomb Podcast, episode 13. And for the fourth episode in a row, we have another Rainbow Six Siege developer on with us as a guest. This time we are joined by Matt Lacombe. He is a game designer on Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, Matt, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit uh, about what you do in the game. Uh, hey, um, game designer on Siege for a full year now. Uh, I've been a dev tester on the project since 2016. I started just after... Um, just before uh, Dustline. So I've been following the project for a good four years now. Um, I work on the three Cs, the weapons, and the destruction of Siege. What The three Cs that you mentioned there, what, what are those? This is a term I've heard before, but I don't really know exactly what it is. Yeah, it's a term that we like to use uh, uh, as game developers to talk about the characters, uh, the controls, and, you know, camera controls and... Uh, Forget the the last one. Sorry, <laughs> camera controls and camera controls character. Sorry, um, and yeah, it's how everything uh, behaves. You know, you move your character, how your character behaves co the, toward your controls, and how the camera behaves with this. It's what makes every like the movement and the feel of the game is usually based on the three C's. Sometimes you will hear people say, "Oh, the three C's are bad," and you don't necessarily understand why is that. It's Maybe the character doesn't follow you when you press left, or it doesn't follow as good as it should be. Uh, there's, it's mostly the game feel, to be honest. It's hard to go in details without, you know, going pointing out games. But the the speed that you crouch, uh, the, the move, the the movement that you do when you stra uh, strafe, you lean, all those things are three C's related. Um, one good example that we had. Uh, not so long ago is the rebel exit. This is something that is tied to the three C's that uh, I'm doing, just like pressing an input to do an action in the game. Usually that's the core of the three C's when we talk about Siege. Meaning like how we now have the option to to press a button to get off repel. Is that what you're referring there with the repel exit? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, this was one of the things I worked on. It was mostly to improve the three C's when, well, we, that's how we say, say it in, a, uh, in the house, but uh, we improve the control of the player. Uh, we improve the control of the player to the character. So meaning that he, it's more responsive, it's more, we don't try to guess what you want to do. We give you the choice of making your own actions. I appreciate that so much more now after having played a single player game yesterday where every time I ran past a ladder, it auto threw me on that ladder. <laughs> and I was so close at breaking my keyboard. They just give me a prompt for everything so I, I get to choose it. So that yeah. that repel exit was uh, was kind of nice, yeah. It's actually but been a big one difference. Of the, yeah. it, it's one of the important things is to make sure that we don't give prompts on everything because at the end yeah, of the day, true. we don't want, we want to give you the choice that you want to, to, to make the, the action that you want to do, but we don't want you to force, like press R each time that you are pulling the mag, putting in the mag, you don't need to press four times. And yeah, it's all about player comfort. Now, so every time that like I, I shoot somebody and I definitely got a headshot, but whenever I uh, <laughs> look back on it, uh, you know, maybe I didn't, that's, that's, that's your area of expertise. Like how, how does, are all are the three C's that you mentioned there, they're all connected, right? And it's like, like what's what's going on there? Like when you see people like me complaining, like I got a headshot, and then you know most of the time, I'll fully admit, most of the time that I complain about stuff like that. If you go down, you break it down frame by frame, I'm wrong. What are you seeing? Probably there? rate of fire. What's that? It's probably rate of fire is a big one. Yeah. What what do you see there? Like that most players get confused, and what do you think causes some frustration in that area? Um. Yeah. Well, the, the, um, it's. If you go back to um, before we changed the recall in the year two, uh, the cursor wasn't always aligned. And when we did the, the change to the current recall that we have, uh, we noticed that some people kept mentioning that they were getting shots that didn't land at the end of the day. So, yeah, it's mostly going frame by frame, making sure that everything hits correctly. Uh, we removed the hit marker when you are shooting at someone. 
Usually this is the kind of feedback that you get in single player games and stuff like that. But we remove those because obviously you don't want to get the the hit confirmation through two surfaces or two walls. So yeah, we, we had since it's a multiplayer well, multiplayer multiplayer game, we had to remove some feedback like that to make sure that it's fair for everyone. So yeah, sometimes it can happen that with the network and everything, you feel like you should it, but it didn't it if you go frame by frame. It's also just a million different factors, right? <laughs> it is. Like it, it, it could be you have bad internet. It could be bad internet on the other person. It, it could yeah. be uh, different elevations and how you're hitting like through the the texture versus the hitbox. And there's so many things it can be. Uh, and, That's and it's a big pretty one. hard to yeah. It's also pretty hard to judge exactly where everything goes in a 900 uh, RPM gun, right? Yeah, oh, yeah like, totally. Sometimes it's jumping past the head, but it was just in cadence with a new bullet being fired, so you you went just past it. Um, and you have to yeah. keep in mind that the hitbox is is not actually actually what you see. That it's the hitbox is usually a man shaped thing inside the mesh that you see. If you so the collars, the bags, and everything, they are outside of the hitbox. Just the way. Well, we had that before, and we had to move to human shaped hitboxes. <laughs> we, we had, had the big AMF problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe that's why Jaeger and Bandit are so strong now. You can't hit the earmuffs anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You see the earmuffs and can't shoot through them. Um, which leads to another thing that we had I had it during the um, during the the year. Uh, it's the limb penetration. Um, yeah. It's something that I worked on uh, to actually help improve the fact that sometimes you think you get a headshot, you don't. And I feel like so far everything is well received. Uh, even though in the beginning people were a bit. Uh, unsure about the shotguns I feel like it turns out pretty good to be honest uh, the stats didn't lower because that happened well weren't shotguns the one thing that basically wasn't affected in a fight yeah, exactly. like it wouldn't penetrate anything and it didn't penetrate anything before so, so nothing really changed if... yeah but the, the perception was everything else was buff and this was yeah buff. sure mm-hmm. so it led to an impression that we were nerfing them but no nah. To be honest, it, the, the stats didn't change and prove this. Did you see any change with DMRs for after that change, performance-wise? Not really. No. no. Not really. But DMRs then again, are... not that many people are actually playing them, so it's also a little harder to get proper data on it, right? Exactly. That's yeah. one of the main problems. Um, a lot of players use the same weapons because it's comfort. I know, like, if you go on hash, well, you know, everyone takes the R4C because, well, it's the R4C. But uh, uh, sometimes it can get hard to get some good data on the G36 just because it's not picked enough. Sure. Those kind of situations happen. And DMRs are, just like shotguns, a bit harder to get the information because they're picked uh, way less often. Now, one of the uh, one of my clips that I'll never forget uh, was it was on the old Oregon, and there was a dock laying on the stairs going down to basement, the laundry stairs. And he was laying head first, so his arms were in front of him like this. I come around the corner, and I'm just unloading. I mean, unloading on his forehead. And his hands just happen to be in the way. And I end up dying. And I'm just like, no! So it was, yeah. it was definitely a welcome change for me. Yeah, tree armors with uh, the, the damage reduction to limbs, yeah, they will tank a lot. You've actually we've we've already talked about quite a few changes yeah, we, there. Limb penetra- limb penetration, the recoil, we are caliber based destruction. Is yeah. there something what would you say is the favorite thing that you've worked on, the favorite change? Because you say you've worked on the game since Dustline, and that's a awfully long time. And so yeah. there's been so many improvements since then. What's your favorite mechanic that you've sort of changed? Um I I think uh, I'll go with the uh, first recalls I really did from the ground up, which are the Commando and uh, Roni, so which are uh, the uh, Mozzie weapons. I feel like going up from nothing and making recalls that people seem to enjoy. I mean, people usually praise those weapons, so it's really, yeah, would, uh, would be my favorite thing. Did you play a part in the first, uh, do you remember the first predictable recoil? Were no. you... Do you remember the sort of community outrage regarding that when it came out? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was a um, 
b before being an actual game designer on the weapons, resistance, and stuff like that, I was the dev tester assigned to the ga uh, game designer that was do doing those. So uh, yeah, the re uh, all let's say four versions of the recoils. Yeah, I've tested uh, all of them. It's something <laughs> that I really enjoy to do. It's just like put on some music, spend the afternoon, and just like madly go on recoils. Exactly. Wow. That's one of my favorite things to do. I'm I'm a little sad that I never got or went further because it was an it was an interesting fix to something that everyone wanted, but then when they got it, they kind of didn't want it anyway. Um, the the whole idea of you being able to really really train and learn this pattern and then redraw it mid gunfight and transfer it to the second target because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in in siege we have predictable-ish recall, it kind of goes a certain route, but there is a, a way more or way more spread calculated per each bullet as we go, then, then like, you, you won't be able to just sit down and just practice and then get it to, you know, basically, like, a, a dot, no matter oh, how exactly. good you get, right? Um, oh, exactly. Um, when we went with the new, um, the new recall system, we, we went with stages. You remember, if you... Saw the uh, scorpion patch notes uh, last uh, uh, during uh, 1.0 mm -hmm. when we said that uh, the 11 first bullets were buffed. Well, it's the the last stage of that recall starts at 11 bullets, so everything before that is easier. Uh, so we have a recall for zero to one bullet, so that means the first bullet that you will shoot. So you will have a diamond value, you will have all the recoil, uh, recoils values, and they increase on each stages. Um, what makes weapons more comfortable is usually when the, the diamond is, wi uh, is high, but not wide. Uh, if I make some shapes, it's just like you prefer something like this instead of something that is more widespread. So yeah. Um, Would you just explain what the purpose of that diamond is? That's where the potent bullet could potentially land after the bullet you fired. It's where the next bullet could potentially land. Is that correct? Somewhat. No, somewhat. somewhat. Okay. <laughs> because the the recall is mostly two two big values. You have the uptime, which me, which is a, a steady rate which the gun will climb up. So that's why when you spread on a you spread on a wall and you don't control the recoil, it always goes with the same space in between each bullets because that value is is set for each weapon. The what the actual diamond does is we create a triangle with a left point, right point and top point and we uh, a point will be generated inside the triangle, and we will flatten it to have a horizontal value only, which will be applied to the uptime. So yeah, that's where your next shot will land. If that makes that sense. makes a lot more sense, yes. Okay, so first bullet hits, a triangle yeah. is drawn above that, a new spot somewhere in there gets pointed out to be the shot, but that gets normalized only to a horizontal level. Because exactly. the uptime is what dictates the spread between shot one and shot two, or shot fifteen and shot sixteen. Exactly. So that makes sense. If you have some weapons that uh, can talk about the, the the scorpion, I guess, which because it, it kicks to the left, kicks to the right really hard, it's because the top point of the diamond is really low, which means that you have more chances to hit a hard value on the left or hard value on the right which means that it's really hard to control because the, the probability of hitting a value that is not close to where you are. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, if you draw a triangle and you put the top part really high, you have more chance of being closer to the center because mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's a graph, I mean. If you, uh, when it you makes sense, yeah. At, yeah. If you do maths at the... At high schools and stuff like that, and you wonder what the, they're all about. Yeah, they're doing recalls. <laughs> <laughs> Same school. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, when we talk about the, um, the diamond, it's mostly um, a horizontal recall, and the vertical recall is only a, it's dictated by the weapon itself. And all those values increase the more the, the longer your burst is. So if you get to the seventh shot, well, your web, uh, you did, 
triangle gets bigger and it becomes more random if you, uh, if you go that way. Before we get out of this one, then I just want to clarify all the attachments for everyone then. Mm. Yep. So I might be completely wrong, but my, my idea would be that muscle break was for the first shot recall pretty much, right? Yeah, exactly. Only? Flashes uh, for a ne the next set and then compensators for the long run. But I explain how yeah, they exactly. work. If we if we want a general uh, set of rules, yeah, exactly like you mentioned, first shot muzzle break, flash either for shorter burst and compensator when you want to go full burst and empty the mag. Uh, every weapon, not every weapon. If you once again we take uh, the scorpion uh, example, the first shot recall is usually higher than the rest of the weapon. So the first bullet will hit and the spacing between the first and the second bullet will be bigger than the second and the third bullet. So in those cases, that's where the muzzle break is the most important because it cuts this value in half and allows you to pick up the, um, the center of your screen faster because the elastic time and the uptime is cut. So that's why we it's mostly used on pistols and DMRs because there's only first shot. You never go into burst and stuff like that because it's semi-auto. Uh, flash either is like the middle ground. If you don't know what you want, if you don't know, you're unsure about the, the weapon recoil and how to handle it, or you don't know what attachment to put, flash either is usually the, the best guess because it will reduce a bit the, the diamond, so reducing left and right recoil, and it also cuts the uh, climbing up time and the uh, elastic time. But it's in lower values than the muzzle break and the um, compensator. And the compensator only affects the, 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 um, the diamond. So it's only on weapons that are uh, uh, automatic. So that's why we had them remove uh, on uh, DMRs a short while ago, because it's not an option, doesn't work. So it makes the left and right points smaller. So the chances of kicking left and right is, is smaller. So if you're emptying mags, go for the compensator. Oh, and extended arrow and... <laughs> no. Exe Wait, you wish they left compensator in? For the DMRs, just... Yeah. For those just that so didn't people, know. <laughs> just so people could, like, waste their time with... Nah. Don't be annoyed. <laughs> I'm just no, being exactly. mischievous. Suppressor and heavy barrel does nothing to recall, correct? Exactly. It's the same as not having an attachment. Exactly. All right. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about the silencer and the extended barrel, or... Sure, yeah. Could yeah. go back. I mean, go ahead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, I'll try to not sound so out of touch with this. I mean, it's it's going to be weird. So the silencer reduced the damage by a flat value, so 15% or around that. But it removes the um, the trail of the weapon, but it also removes the threat indicator. So that's the usually the attachment that I suggest on your players when you're not sure about your shot, you're not confident. Well, you the fact that the uh, the other person won't have feedback that he's getting shot at, well, you will most likely have time to recenter and shoot another bullet to compensate the damage that you lost. Uh, for the extended barrel, it's something that didn't age as well. Uh, <laughs> it usually makes the, the damage better uh, on longer distances, because the f fall of damage is... Well, the damage, how it's calculated, is usually a curve. It's, uh, once again, maths. Uh, the value is... When you're in a good range, it's the damage is multiplied by 1.0, which means the full damage. The longer you get, the the, the further you get, you get the multiplied by something like 0 0.6, 0 0.5, depending on the distances. So ARs is 21 meters, 18 meters on the SMGs. And the extended barrel just make it a flat 15, 20% better than um, what you would usually get. So it's good in certain instances, but... Yeah. yeah. They're very, uh, unless... very spaced out where they're good. Exactly. Right. Um, so yeah, the, the silencer is a good pick for newer players. So that's something that I feel like it's often over um, overlooked. People see, oh, I lose damage. That's like, I, I don't want to touch this because losing five or six damage in the UI but you is... gain time. Um, yeah, you gain time. And it's not only the... Def the, the trails that are not there, it's actually the threat indicator that you have on your screen saying, oh, I was shot from the left. Well, it's not there. Um, funnily enough, we, uh, we we did try to cut the damage, you know, like let's buff the, the silencer and remove the, the damage. But 
like the the subject that you discussed last week, uh, frustration. Mm -hmm. If everyone is a suppressor, you don't mm -hmm. know where you're getting shot from. Yeah. yeah. It might start to get frustrating at some point. So I played against a nook one of the, the other day that was using a suppressor, and it was it was intense. I mean, you couldn't hear him walking, you couldn't hear him shooting, and, and that kind of leads me to a question. Maybe you have this answer, maybe not. Um, is there a number you can throw at us? How much quieter is the weapon with the silencer? I mean, you can still hear it when you're right beside it, obviously. But is there a number you can throw at me? Like, the, a regular weapon is this loud, and if you put a silencer on, you can now hear it from this distance instead? Or does that translate? Uh, it's not as clear as that because it's all... It's not, this, it's not modifiers that we apply to okay. the same sound. It's completely something that is recorded differently. Okay. So, yeah, it's not something... Uh, it's not that we did a minus uh, 10 decibel and it's there's your silencer sound. Okay. So With the, is the fret indicator for both um, a, a shot that hits and a shot that misses? Is it both? Yeah. Yeah. And just a clarification on the, um, on the muzzle brake. So, that's the first shot recoil. Yeah. But... I checked this like two or three years ago, but it also returns back to exactly the initial point quicker, doesn't it? So that's why it's quite good for a pistol. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's what uh, I've touched as the elastic time is elastic. the time that it. It's the the time when your weapon goes up to the max point it will reach, and the time it comes back to the middle of the screen quicker. and recenters and ready for the next shot. Is that and it's minus forty five? For yes. first shot recall and recenter on muzzle brake, it is. Yes. Uh, let me see here. Um, flash harder is minus thirty seven percent, thirty seven point five percent first shot recall, minus thirty percent recenter and minus five percent on the diamond. Exactly. And compensator. Oh, uh, sorry, what? Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh yeah, and uh, compensator is seventeen point seventy five for the diamond. So yep. just to just to clarify that the muzzle brake. It it returns you to center quicker, even if you're on like the eighth or ninth bullet in the magazine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. The, this this actually helps if uh, a weapon that has a long recenter time. Okay. It, it's a good option. So That's why you do so much on Buck, right? Yeah. I, I assume because Buck has so his his first shot jumps a lot, and it makes it more steady in the speed you have to pull it down. And when you stop spraying at like the tenth bullet, it doesn't take half a year to get back down to exactly to level zero again. Okay. We should talk about Buck and that C8. <laughs> He's lost grenades now, guys. I think he could have a little bit of a recoil buff. No, don't touch him. He's it's the best gun in the game. It's so it is a really good gun. Like that gun would be scary if it had the recoil of the R4C or something like that. I mean, um, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it's a crazy gun. It's a it's a really fun weapon, and it's actually. It's fun to actually try to master this one because you you don't have the the grips attached on it, so you cannot make the choice between faster ADS or uh, smaller hop time. Uh, and the weapon is a bit wild too. I mean, it's not as bad as it used to be on the first version of the recoil we had a couple of years ago, but uh, it's a it's a weapon that has a bit more recoil than the, the usual AR, and I feel like it's satisfying to. To master this one, yeah, I, I love this weapon. I think with C8, like you can get really good with it, and you can really learn to control it, even on on decent ranges. Uh, and and it has a very high skill gap compared to a lot of other guns. But then you go to something like an SMD12, which I know it's a it's a sidearm. It's not supposed to be something that you just spray and control because we we had that at one point. Yep. You could hit fire people across the map with it as well. Um, but but. The the janky like super fast left to right recall is very very hard to deal with on on the the fast fire rate uh, sidearm <laughs> guns. Whereas with Buck, it's like it's enjoyable. Yeah, well, there's almost a 400 RPM difference in, yep. between both of them. So yeah, and we talked about the Scorpion uh, here and there, but and it's one of the reason I went ahead and tried to make it the buff it. It was just mostly because it's frustrating to try to play left and right and guess where it's going to land so for primary weapon it's something that i really want to avoid making like those wild left and right things kicking yeah so you always feel like you're in control or at least could learn to control it right well at, at least not going and say uh, 
well, the weapon screwed me. Yeah. I, I mean, it will happen because the, the recall is not steady and not something that you is, like you said, always a dot at the middle of center if you control it. But you, you don't want it to be like the go-to and be like, oh, well, I played that weapon, so there's no way I could win. I guess, on the other hand, you don't want people to luckily get a headshot that they otherwise wouldn't have gotten either. Because that's just as frustrating if you... If you see it in the kill cam, you know, someone's swinging out with an SMG-12 and they're spraying all over the window and that, <laughs> yep. like, I feel like that's where more more of the frustration comes from, from being the, the one-shot headshot mechanic, isn't so much that it's one-shot headshot, it's that the guy was missing everything <laughs> and then the gun jumped over there and helped him out, right? Because yep. um, when people aim on you and, and you can see they're doing well, they're controlling it, then you don't feel cheated out of anything. Um, but but if, if five bullets hit in, you know, the, the right side of the doorway and two hit on the top and one on the bottom and then one hit you in the face. You you can't be a little salty walking away from that. Yep, exactly. I wanted, One thing that... Sorry, go on. No, no go, go, ahead, ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, and this might lead into a question I know that you wanted to ask, but it just it strikes me that it must be difficult balancing a multi-platform game that's also an eSport, like a real challenge. Uh, is there any special considerations for like console or... Oh yeah, to, uh, totally. Um, when we talk about the, the recoil for consoles, they actually have a different value, uh, set of values. So it, we can tweak and independently the recoil for the PC and leave the consoles have their own recoil. We usually don't, we actually try to make them similar. So if the weapon usually tends to kick to the left, well, we'll, we'll do the same kind of thing. So it keeps its personality. But usually we're talking about 30-ish percent easier recall on the consoles. Interesting. It's not a flat definitive values. It's just like a guideline that I usually try to, to respect. If somebody's playing with a controller on PC, do they have those values as well? Yep. Okay. They, they sw sw switch over to um, controller uh, recall. Interesting. What if I have a controller plugged in but use a mouse and keyboard? Do, does the game know that? Uh, it, it will know it as soon as you start inputting on the controller. Okay. So the, it's actually really... No, you, you can't cheese it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was playing uh, I was playing another game recently, and uh, it's, it's like cross-platform, and everyone talks about cross-platform, but I just think, like, I'm not sure cross-platform is the be-all and end-all, man. Like, because obviously on console... You get out aimed by people with mouse and keyboard, and then on mouse and keyboard, there has to be something to compensate people on controller, like um, not what's it called, aim assist. Uh, aim assist. Yeah. yeah. So I, it's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but, yeah. I I want to specify that even though it's a, it's a legend, and when the PC player are talking about console player, uh, aim assist is only on TH and um, uh, Tiro and um, yeah situation. Situations, yeah. yeah, it's not on a lot of the year. Yeah, thank goodness. Uh, it, <laughs> I mean, I, that honestly, that's an important part. Like, I, you know, <clears throat> one of the things that first struck out to me because I started on PS4 is like you got you get in and you're like, you're as, as the first gunfight you get into, you're like, whoa, this is a hardcore game. Like, there's no aim assist. My sights aren't getting locked on here. I just died to a one bullet headshot. Like, this is this is a hardcore experience. I think that decision to not include aim assist in Rainbow Six Siege is something that has really shaped the identity of this game um, for sure. And probably wasn't an easy decision in all honesty, but. Well, uh, the lethality is part of our, uh, the identity of the game. So yeah, it still so. translates to, uh, to the console. And if we look at the stats of, you know, average kills per round and stuff like that, they're still holding their home compared to the PC. It's not like night and day, uh, mm -hmm. where people only get kills with shotguns. Obviously, shotguns have a have better kills per round on consoles, but it's not night and day. There's there's some like specific questions because I think, I mean, for for the viewer right now, we are sitting with a person who has so much data on not on how these weapons actually perform. Like this is stuff that we've never had access to before this is stuff that most people have never seen before like we get we get data on how operators perform it, yep. but we've never really seen data on how weapons perform so a couple of things that i want to throw at you here 
first of all, let me let me get a clarification on this because it was put out a long time ago. The average engagement distance in a gunfight in Rainbow Six Siege, it was something around like nine meters. Is it is it still holding true to that? Has that changed over time? Is that value still pretty much the same as it's always been? It's pretty much ten meters. Yeah. Okay, pretty much ten meters. Just so uh, so for the for the viewer, when you're thinking about weapons and weapon damage, that should be a number that you should be thinking about. I mean, in all honesty, like, you know, 10 meters is the average engagement distance uh, in Rainbow Six Siege. Um, I, I think, you know, we were on the uh, topic of console, and you mentioned that, for the most part, weapons do perform the same between PC and console. Are there any weapons that jump out to you, like, this weapon performs differently on console versus PC? N not a lot, uh, to be honest. Uh, like I mentioned, the shotguns... They, while they do not behave differently, it's easier to control a shotgun on consoles because, yeah, aiming on uh, aiming on consoles is a bit harder. Uh, so the one example that really stands out was um, the uh, FO12, the shotgun from uh, Ella. Yes. If you re remember a couple patches ago, we nerfed the, the weapon because it, it was really frustrating. Um, and it led to a lot of banning of Ella on consoles. If you looked on PC, she was barely banned or we didn't have a, anything that points toward the frustration. I won't say that the, the, like that, but uh, we didn't have any info pointing that the FO12 was broken or um, worth banning, but on consoles, she was banned 64% of the time and picked the rest of the time. Wow. Which means that, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, and, once again, that's something that uh, is often um, perce uh, perceived when you read people commenting and talk discussing about shotguns. It's not because you're a plat player that you don't play shotguns. Usually, platinum players and diamond players are the one that were using the um, FO12 the most, and mm -hmm. coppers players and around that were using more the uh, scorpion. So it's not because you, you have bad aim that you use, shot uh, you use shotguns. But yeah, mostly on consoles, we we will see more uh, more shotguns. But they did the spread and stuff like that. They don't change from what they are on PC. Interesting. Uh, on that same topic of Ella, do you see any disparity between how a PC player uses the Scorpion, her SMG, versus the console player? And I mean, the reason I ask that is because you know we've mentioned several times in this episode so far that the the Scorpion has some wild recoil. So my thought process would yep. be that a PC player might be able to still use that weapon effectively, whereas a console player would really struggle. Does that show in the data at all? Uh, a bit. To be honest, uh, we are talking about 0 0.65 kills per round. So when you pick Ella with the Scorpion, 65% of the time you will get a kill with this weapon. If we go on consoles, we're talking about 62. Okay. It's not a big difference. Uh, like we mentioned, the the fact that the consoles have thirty percent less recall, even though it's wild, people seems to that's surprisingly close. Yeah, exactly. It is, it is but how does close. that compare very, to very other close. like opera? Like, is that a wide margin for what we're talking about there, or like if you were, I don't know, no, I don't, no, no. what's a, what's a, what's another operator that has two? Um, it, 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 I mean, the TSG would be a good yeah. example because it it's. At least used a ton on PC, and it's it's immensely strong on PC in the right hands. Yeah, but I guess it, TCS. I guess it correlates uh, just because of the the ones that are shooting at you have the same disadvantage, right? So it yeah, probably exactly. nullifies. So yeah, once again, same kind of thing. We're talking about zero point zero three difference. Okay. In the TCS what? on consoles That's versus shocking, players. That's shocking, actually. Yeah. It is. Yep. Mm. That's it's. It's mostly because that's like actually impressive that it's that close. Yeah. Well, you you have the same terms of engagement that the opponent yeah, has. Yeah. So I, I, I guess it just evens out because everyone's on the same playing field either way, right? So exactly. if something is is strong at a high control level or a lower control level, it's the same for both, no matter what. Did, but keep in mind that in the stats that I just mentioned, we we are not talking about accuracy. At the end of the no. day, you still have to do mostly five kills or do the objective at the end of the of the, the round. So yeah, the kill rate will be somewhat similar. 
there's so many questions that we could go yeah, into. Yeah, that makes here. sense. As well. Like well, this data is actually <laughs> fascinating. Um, actually, on the CSG, yeah. let's uh, let's talk about the damage on that one. Oh yeah, totally. So that uh, hit today, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it to counter the the fact that if you just saw a TSG in the other end of the map, you were most likely in a really bad situation going into your next gunfight and or like getting shot for a drone hole, stuff like that. Is it to alleviate that frustration or was it still too strong in just a fair one-on-one -on -one fight? I think it's mostly about the, the overall kit. Um, when we started with slug shotguns, we started with the Bosch G. And mm -hmm. we all know how the Bosch G turns out. And Fantastic. Well, it's <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's hilarious. I mean. And it's rewarding when it works. <laughs> and we didn't have a lot of data on how it was really performing because it's, it's mostly a, fu a fun weapon. So when we created TCS, we were like, well, let's do what the Bosch G does. It doesn't seem to impact a lot the, um, the stats and everything that we, uh, that we uh, well, it's not breaking the game. So we went with high crazy damage, with like we had Haiti for. Uh, it has solid destruction because it's a shell, and the fall of damage is really long compared to um, your usual SMG. So, yeah, it, it did everything so well that we had to select one part of we wanted to cut. It wasn't the destruction because it's quite interesting to have a weapon that is useful to create rotations, create some self destruction, and also be able to fight. Uh, magazine size, I mean, it's already semi auto, so clear the, the clearer path seemed like the the damage. That way, well, you don't even though you lose an engagement, you're not just like, well, it, if you were playing the TCS, you land one shot and you lose. Well, you, you still almost won there because he's dying from anything. So yeah, we're trying to to see if lowering the damage makes it still the TCS while not completely gutting it. Because so what makes you of... choose the the exact number In, oh. instead of instead of that number uh, instead of it being sixty or forty or like what kind of data goes into deciding that that's the exact thing that that we're going to try now? Uh, we went mostly with uh, we wanted to not outright kill one armor and two, uh, two armor. Uh, so that's why we went with 56, if I remember correctly, just to make sure that you fall the BNO if you're two armor after two shots. Uh, when you fall the BNO, you still have at least a chance of someone helping you out and something like that. So we, we didn't go with stats. We were mostly, let's go with uh, the logic here of how many shots you take to go the BNO. And it also rewards attackers that are three speed, uh, three armor. If for some reason you're shooting a fuse, well, you, you won't down him in, three sh uh, in two shots. You will need a third shot. Interesting. Something I've always thought with the TCSG is that I've, I've, I've felt was strange personally. And, and maybe this is just my opinion. I mean, you guys let me know what you think. If I have the TCSG and I'm in a gunfight against Cali, I would rather have the TCSG. Yep. If I'm in a gunfight with a Glass, I would rather have the TCSG. And... That just seemed a little strange to me that a defender who obviously, I mean, you look at it with K, K brings a ton of utility and a nitro cell. And yeah, I think so to go back to your point, the total kit, it, it did seem a little bit strange. Yep. Like I think there's people, especially maybe, maybe like middle, like, like gold players might look and like, why are they nerfing the TCSG? Why are they nerfing Cade? But when you start to look at it, it does make sense to me. It really does. If you if you take the the TCS and you place it on offense, you would invalidate like all of the DMRs, yeah. just like mm -hmm. because it doesn't have the destruction that it has. It has similar damage. Well, at least now the DMRs have at, at least more damage. If you compare and a little them. bit of destruction, yeah, yeah, uh, that's something that we added to try to make them uh, more appealing. That that's something really funny uh, about Twitch. Uh, I was playing on live and playing only Twitch with the four uh, four one seven. And people were just like, why are you playing this instead of the FAMAS? And yeah, I was actually like just trying to figure out what can I help to make it more fun. Yeah. Because it wasn't fun to play. I, the barricade uh, taking 20 shots to go down. If you're playing Mavericks, you don't even have that, uh, that many shots in your mags. Yeah. So yeah, 
funny yeah, uh, yeah how people just like wondering why someone would play the 417 and at that point it's just like yeah we might need to make them a bit better so people don't judge you on the fact that you're taking a weapon over another one i mean even as a dirty old bb main on the sr25 we had to request teammates to come and open barricades because you no, just yeah. you couldn't mm -hmm. right like it took 20 shots to open a barricade um so, so you were calling for like a teammate to come over and spray the barricade open for you and and now they can open hatches they open barricades in what is it six shots or six shots six shots i Five, think yeah shots, yeah um yeah because now they they need to take six portions out of the barricade for it to break and it, it's just double the destruction on the barricade or something so it's around six shots yeah well the the way barricades behave they they have hps basically they just have a lot of them and the six shot combine will do the correct amount to make sure that it's destroyed okay it's it's not the, the visual feedback of planks falling you down is not tied to the HP, the, their, their mm -hmm. HPs. Because when you do a melee, it feels like that amount of damage that is three or four times the, uh, the damage of a bullet. And there's still only one plank falling down. It's not like half so of the thing falling down. It's just because you're guaranteed to have dealt enough damage and it just magically adds up. That's, that's yeah, exactly. why we can shoot the six planks out yeah, and then exactly. bolt it? Okay, fair enough. I, uh, you mentioned the F2 there. That gun is completely If you look at the F2 now compared to six months ago, yep. that gun is completely different. And I am seeing that take an effect in ranked right now. Like, there are fewer people at playing Twitch right now. Um, Twitch is not the force that she used to be, in my opinion. Like, Twitch used to be ash for people who uh cared a little bit about utility <laughs> it, yep. it, it, twitch was ash 2.0 and now that yeah. i really feel like i i personally i feel like twitch's drone is better than it used to be i feel like she got a buff with the utility in that department but her f2 has some serious recoil then you combine the fact that it only has 25 bullets now compared to it used to have 30 um yeah it's it's a different weapon well, it, it took some uh, nerfs, one after the other one. Um, the last one being the, the, the hop time that was mostly increased to force a bit more recoil. Uh, we did hear people, you know, people don't like horizontal recoil, so I went a bit, I think, a bit higher than I would have, I would have liked with the uh, hop time, but it's wanted to make it a bit more uncomfortable to play, and people. We're request not requesting, but they, they prefer uptime over left and right. So I went a bit higher than I would have gone if I would have messed with the diamond. Uh, if you look at the, um, the the balancing matrix that we sent over the, the last patch notes, she's not in trouble. I would say she's still like in the twenty-ish percent pick rate, if I remember correctly. Uh, the wind delta went from plus one to minus one, maybe. So she's still in the middle of the pack. Um, for some reason, we see that the, the performance goes way too low. It's something that it's easy to tweak uh, and put the FAMAS back where it was. <laughs> it's I, fun. Mean, I, I prefer the weapons like that, though. Like, I, I find it more... I find it more fun to play the F2 now than it was before. Because n now you have to fight the gun a little bit, and, and you feel like you earned it when you got that spray. It, it was, you know, control. It wasn't just going bzz, 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 like a, a sewing machine of death. Zeronic is a glutton for punishment. Um, I like to get killed, personally. I, 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 liked, I think I like for, for, for the bullets to go in straight lines. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but there's a fairness to sure. the recall, I think. Is that what you're getting at yeah. as well? Like, yeah. I, you, can, you can learn, right? Like, yes. Honestly, I think most of, at, at least from my experience, most of the, the high-end or competitive players after playing it for... A day or two, there, you don't really notice it anymore. It, it, it's like I don't. If I play Twitch, think about oh, the recall is crazy now. It's that's just how it is, and it's it's fairly easy to deal with after putting a few hours in. But it, it's just not as bonkers as it was before because it was way too easy before, right? It's like old school Ash with um, with ACOG on or old school Jaeger with ACOG on. It it didn't feel justified every time you got a kill. Because a lot of them were just that they were they were really easy. Yeah, I can understand uh, that point. Yeah, totally. 
I, I, I'd like to uh, talk, you know, while we have all this data available to us, what are the top five uh, guns in the game? When And what's the metrics you would look at to define the top five guns in the game? Is KD or is kills per round? Like, what is what is the stat that you look at to decide, to decide this gun is performing extremely well? Um, it's a bit of a mix between the uh, kills per round and the uh, average KD uh, okay. we're talking uh, normally. Uh, because the KD counts everything. Uh, if you have someone that has a nitro cell, well, it will count those kills as, with the nitro cell and everything. We, we do not count uh, each heal that are made when you have this weapon up because pistols would get flawed, uh, flawed results because you swap to your pistol because you're out of bullet, you get the kill, you swap back, they would have stats that are like completely <laughs> broken. And so, so yeah, so we take the amount of kills that are done when you have this weapon in your, in your inventory. So this means that, like I mentioned before, the 0 0.6 and stuff like that, 0 0.6 of the time when you have this weapon in your inventory, you will get a kill. Interesting. During that so time. what are the top five highest performing weapons in the game? Maybe, can we, can we split it up by attackers and defenders? Top five attacker. Okay, yep. let's do it that uh, way. Yeah, I think that'll be that, interesting. That, uh, I went ahead and took the notes from Diamond Plus on PC uh, for both attacker and defenders and rolled the stats for um, gold and below. Okay. Just to, to have like a yeah. kind of a difference if you, if you want. So on attack, the first one would be the MK17, which is Blackbeard AR. Wow. The, that's for PC uh, Diamond Plus. And, that's, uh, and that statistically is, is the worst gun in the game. Like, it's one of the worst attacker weapons in the game when you look at it stats-wise. Exactly. That's really interesting. Exactly. So that's why we have to take everything mm -hmm. into account because if you look at the stats, it's not super impressive. Right. But the fact that you have a shield in front of you <laughs> kind of... <laughs> 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 Who would have fooled it? <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're talking about the 1.2 KD. Wow. So... It's quite good, and you get a kill 80% of the time when you pick this weapon during a round, which is the highest stats on attack. After that, we have a triple tie with uh, Ash R4C, IQ G8, and the other one was uh, the M70, uh, M62 from Zofia. Interesting. So it's, yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the most interesting one in the in this tree section, I think, is the uh, G8 from IQ. Uh, you know, the R4C, everyone knows it's super good. The M7062, uh, everyone knows it's good. When you pick those operators, when you pick uh, Zofia or Ash, you always take those weapons. But on IQ, it's not the weapon, the, the go-to weapon that people will go to. It's It has 20-ish percent pick rate over the uh, the other one. Well, but it's, it's slowly become that in higher ranks, though, after Angle yep, Foregrip, yep. right? Because we see it a ton in competitive now as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, for, uh, when we watch Pro League and stuff like that, uh, it, they always play the, uh, the G8 with the Angle yeah. Grip. Uh, it's, slowly, it's slowly catching up to this. Uh, okay. Each season, uh, it's growing up by percentage. It used to be um, the 5.52 with the 95% uh, pick rate and the 5% the, the 500 percent distributed in the uh, AUG and the uh, G8. So it's slowly creeping uh, up. After that, on the fourth position, we have the 5.52 for IQ. We're wow. talking about 0. 0.76 uh, uh, kills per round and a KD of 1.1. And the top, uh, the top fifth, which is to me the most interesting one, is a tie between the C70E with the Jackal AR and Nux, uh, uh, Nux FMG9. Wow. What? Yep. Wow. That's about operator, uh, operator um How do you ability, have the two first though? guns in the top five? <laughs> what? Uh, that's insane. So that's, what, so that's why uh, we the weapon sets are super important to look at those things, but you have to take everything into account. Um, yeah, because Nux doesn't have the best stats all, uh, all around, but the fact that you are playing someone that is her only goal is get into confrontation with attacker uh, defenders and just like try to get kills. You know, most most of the operator is made to kill people. 
well, kill the feather, sorry. Uh, so the stats will be higher because your main mindset is I'm not trying to do something fancy, I'm not trying to open a wall, I'm not trying to counter some intelligence or whatever, I'm just like, I'm getting kills. So that I feel yeah. like this mindset impacts the stats a lot. Yeah, it makes I mean, a lot it, it of sense. It makes sense with Blackbeard as well, right? It 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 kind of depends on what your role is, how many kills you should get. It's the same if we're looking at, at a normal 5v5 game. Some people have the tank role, some people have the support, some people are entry. And and some operators like Nook and Ash, for example, just their main job has always been seen as just you walk in and you you keep going until you can't go further. That's that's pretty exactly. pretty much it, right? But it doesn't tell you a lot about the weapon, does it? I mean, you could pretty much you could give Nook an MPX maybe, and you might you know you could you'd probably get a similar result to that. So you have to be careful about what information you glean from that and what changes you make to the game based on these stats. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. And I was going to say, I would have thought the C7E, for example, statistically, would have been nearer the top because surely that's got to be like one of the best guns in the game. Yeah, stats-wise, it's one of the best, just like the AK-12. But yeah, I feel like the, the part where you're spinning a minute or a minute and a half looking at footsteps, trying <laughs> to figure out how to place that cluster charge... Well, your gun is not up at that time, and you're not yeah. currently looking for a fight. So I feel like this impacts the, the stats a bit. Hmm. Yeah, we also have to clarify, when we're talking about the best guns now, we're talking about the kits that have the highest KD. Not that that gun versus another gun performance-wise is, is good or bad, that, right? That's for the KD. When we're talking about the kills per round, I can... Yeah, sorry, kills per round, yeah. The, the kills per round, I can have... Uh, if we go over Nook and we're talking about the, the FMG, it's, it's uh, 0.73. And on the shotgun, it would be uh, 0 0.5. Interesting. So we do, oh. uh, we do have the granularity of the kit, so depending yeah. on what weapon you get. It's, it's harder to get the information about the secondaries, but the primary is usually real life. With the R4C being up there, off the top of your head, I'm, I'm throwing this at you on the on the fly here, but... What effect did her losing ACOG have, if any? I mean, has I, I, I assume the R4C has always been perform one of the top performers. When you look at the kills per round, when you look at the KD, did it change much with losing the ACOG? Not a lot. Initially, it does, but uh, it usually comes back to, um, to the same point. Uh, yeah, kind of. Um, it usually limits more the player on how they take their engagement, and they should, people usually wisen up and take different engagements. So initially, yes, it does reduce the KD and the average kill per round, but it kind of literally, well, organically go back to the same values. I was half expecting an, an improvement, to be honest with you. <laughs> people rushing in with Ash and benefiting from the fact they have a hollow. Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, win rate with the... With Win rate did go up a little bit, right? And on pick rate went down a little bit. Exactly. Um, straight after the A cup being removed, but that might also have something to do with the amount of people that play the character. If if you want to play that certain way, maybe you'll go and play a character that can, and then the people that are playing Ash for for her kit and for her gun will will maybe stay there, right? Yep. So that probably well, impacts it a little bit as well. Well. Uh... Yeah, as you can see, uh, IQ's weapon are mostly all in the top five. So yeah. I, I think she picked a lot of the, uh, a lot of the slack that uh, Hash had with the uh, ACOG. All of uh, IQ's weapon are really good usually. Uh, they all have ACOG. So if you wanted to rush in guns and uh, guns blazing, IQ's another three speed with the ACOGs. And you could do it for three rounds in a row with three different guns, but on the same uh, operator. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> really mix it up. <laughs> Uh, so if we go on the defense side for uh, well, before going to the defense side, uh, the, there's one weapon that changes when we talk about gold and below, and it's uh, Finca 6B41 that comes in uh, the top performing weapons. It replaces the uh, M762. So is that so the sh mostly shotgun? the same weapon? Is that the sausage? The sh no, no, that's uh, LMG. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's the LMG. Sorry. Hmm. So Finca's LMG comes up and takes the place of uh, so gold and below are using yeah. Finca's LMG. 
they're, they're not using it more than the assault rifle. They turn they back to more, it. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Yeah, that's a I mean, that's, fair that's enough. Really, it hits like a truck. It's yep. got a great optic too. And the, thinkers, thinkers ability. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it helps everything that the um, LNG suffers. So. It's a good thing. You know, you know what I'm taking from this? And maybe we'll see a trend like this on defense, but if you if there's an operator that has a good gun that doesn't have a utility that relies that's super relied upon, that you know, like you mentioned it already, like a thermite has to go and worry about opening up a wall. A thatcher has to worry about what he's doing, you know, doing this. A jackal has to look at footprints. If you've got an operator with a good gun and a very simple gadget that they can you know, kind of be self reliant upon. Then that's the recipe for a high kills per round, maybe. You know, um, yep. wow. If we look Black at the look, Ash. if we look at the Amaru, it's kind of the same thing. For a long time, she was tied to um, the R4C for uh, average kills per round. Wow, really? And we're talking about someone uh, two speed with an uh, LMG. So yeah, so if your gadget is allows you to take better fights it will show up in the, the sets of the weapons interesting this is this is awesome Dang. all right def defenders <laughs> blow my mind with some defenders, defenders. Stats here <clears throat> uh, i feel like there's only one or two surprises yeah. the first one would be uh obviously the for for one uh, for 16 uh we're talking about 0 0.8 kills per round wow so that's pretty good a kd of 1.2 after that, we have a tie between the MP5 of Doc and the K1A from um, Vigil. We're talking about 0 0.79 kills per round, which is really close to um, Jaeger and a KD of 1.2. On the third spot, we have the MX4, which is Alibi um, SMG. If you haven't played this weapon, that's a really good weapon, to be honest. I love uh, it. It's a hidden gem, yeah. would you say? Is that like a is that a little tip for the viewers there? That like, because I don't think I don't see it as much. I mean, for the third ranked weapon on defense, is it probably underpicked? Um, the operator is underpicked, not the uh, sure. not the weapon. The, uh, the weapon has something like ninety eight percent pick right. rate over the uh, CS twelve. Uh, it's one of the weapons when I, I mean uh, we. We usually play at work, and if we have someone that is less experimented and want to try uh, to get better with shooting, that's an operator that they usually su uh, suggest. Uh, going with the MX uh, MX4 and the silencer, all you have to do is place your three holograms in some creative way, and after that, all you have to do is try to pick a fight. So. Yeah, I'm worried it's going to get nerfed now because <laughs> I absolutely love my gun. Because it's got like a uh, high fire rate and quite low recoil. It also has a very pleasant model when you play. Yeah. It's not like the yes. IQAG yeah. where it feels like it gets in the way of your your vision in any way. It, it's very enjoyable to play that gun, yeah. Yeah, that um, on Whammy is really um, disconcerting too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hate that. <laughs> we can blame Orc for that or Steyer. We can blame <laughs> Matt for that. <laughs> you could, you could. You could. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the MX4. Uh, Honestly, I wouldn't. I can't say if we bought for a nerf weapon here, but uh, when we when I did the the buff to the Scorpion, the MX4 was kind of an inspiration. It was just like, don't go over what the MX4 does. You should be good. Right. And it turns out that even going near it was a bit too much for Ella. But uh, hmm. yeah, MX4. I, I feel like it's a a good weapon for someone that doesn't have a which primary role is mostly harassing and fighting attackers. So I'm not too shocked to have a good weapon there like that. It's not like having I mean, termite with the best gun in the game. You, you know, also it, give something up for playing her, right? Yeah, that, exactly. That's the whole thing. Like you don't have the smoke grenades if, if that was what what you otherwise were, were gonna take. So you do lose something even though she has impact nades and, and a really good uh, secondary in the in the shotgun pistol. Well, well, even the uh, re revolver. I mean, yeah. when we added the um, the destruction and that, made for some uh, funsies uh, line of sight. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite thing to do. Is just like opens just like the peak hole and place the uh, hologram behind. It's just like the yeah. three bullets of the revolver makes a decent size hole, which is interesting. After that, on the fourth spot, I feel like it's the um, 
we have to take it with a grain of salt, but if we go only by the stats, it's the 9mm C1, which is Frost SMG. Yeah. So uh, what was the KD for the MX4, sorry, Matt? Uh, 0 0.74 and 1.2 for the KD. Okay. And after that, on Frost SMG, we have 0 0.72 and 1.1. But once again, if we don't take the stats from... Uh, well, if you don't double-check the stats and everything... Well, you think that it's a super great weapon, but you have to keep in mind that most of the time you will be shooting someone that is laying on the ground caught in a frost trap. So that's why the stats are a bit higher. Yeah, um, but I guess w w what when someone shoots someone in your frost trap, because that also happens a lot. And if you're saying this isn't like diamond and up on PC, yeah. I feel like like that gun does the same damage, if not a little bit more than Jaeger's, or it, it's it's up there in terms of damage at least, right? It, um, is, it has almost no recoil. Yeah. Like it, it's a pretty good gun to be honest it's a it's a really great gun because it has higher than average magazine almost no uh, no recoil so you can even go and gold grip on it so yeah yeah i mean no matter what at the end of the day what you can take from that is that frost is getting kills in 70 percent of the rounds she's played right yep. okay i mean and that i mean yeah that's that's amazing but, yeah that's pretty good and the fifth one would be the Commando, um, which is uh, okay. the SMG on uh, the bigger SMG on uh, Mozzie, zero point seventy one and one point two kitty. Interesting. Where where does my uh, my good friend Valkyrie and uh, her M MPX? <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> where does that fall? MPX. Where does that fall? Um, well, she's falling at zero point six two and one point two uh, one point one. Oh, sorry, I was looking at uh, consoles. Let me get PC. <laughs> Sorry to throw you on the spot there. I just gotta know. She's right where she's Maybe needs this to be. is the bit of information. 0 that I need. What is it? 0 0.66. Okay. So does that fall in like average for defenders or is no? Yeah, average, okay. I would say. It's a bit uh a bit above average. Okay. But uh, that's that's a glancing. But you have to keep in mind that most of the time she's on camera. She's not trying to pick up a fight, so that's why she doesn't go as high as as Docker Rook would go. The one bigger uh, difference when we go with the Golden Below is mostly um, the K1A getting better stats and be becoming the best weapon. Wow. We're talking about 0 0.81 and 1.2 KD. Hmm. So, so if we're talking about the best defender weapon, I feel like this one uh, is amongst the best, yeah. So, sorry, K1A for is top for the gold and below. Exactly. That kind of makes sense to me, because if you think about play styles, droning, working as a team, a lot of people, like I, I'm mostly solo queue, mm -hmm. and I'm not a diamond. Do you know what I mean? So I think perhaps a bit higher, you, you've got a better idea of the meta and you're playing with people in communication. Yeah. I, I can but, see that. But at the end of the day... The, uh, we had the stats at some point about the, um, the amount of time spent on drones, and yeah. Yeah. The, depending on your rank, sometimes it, it, it comes up at 46 seconds, which means it's the prep phase plus one second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wait a second! Yeah. Wait a so second! Can we go back? When, when, when were there? When did I miss that stat? When was that shown? I don't. Know. Oh well, with, I, I'm sharing it right okay. now. I feel, uh, <laughs> but yeah. We, we had those stats, and it's easy for. Uh, well, you, when you think about vigil, it's just like you're denying drones and stuff like that. But the lower your rank, the less time you spent on the drones. But this KD goes up. So at the end of the day, I feel like it's easier to control than the um, 416. And your mentality is I'm going for kills. That's all I'm doing as vigil. I just like, I won't use my gadget and everything. I'm just picking. There things. might even be some security in just you assuming that they, no one sees you. Right. Like may, maybe you do plays because you, you legitimately feel that no one have a clue where you're when you're running yeah. around, even if they aren't droning you. Cause yeah. I know if I'm playing vigil, I, I feel way less stressed than if I'm playing calf, for example, if I'm playing calf, I'm checking everything. I'm so worried if they saw where I, I went. Right. But if I'm vigil, I just, I just check if my points go up. If my points don't go up on the scoreboard, then they probably didn't see me. Which makes sense, yeah. So, Vigil as well. If you corner a Vigil, he's got a bit more firepower to get back at you with. Well, it depends how good you are with that pistol, I suppose, with Cav. Yep. 
So do you have that? St- I'm, I'm still on this drone stat because I think that's that's fascinating. Uh, do you have that in front of you? Like, how much time does a gold player spend on drones versus a diamond? I don't think I have oh, okay. it uh, close enough. To okay. But that disproves my theory about Vigil totally. Well, it doesn't because if- cause here's what I'll say. With, with I think Vigil is really good against somebody who's droning for themselves. Like one drone in that person, he's yeah. really strong against. But when you combine a drone – Maybe two drones Someone. with a team that's coordinated, then Vigil's not as strong yeah. anymore, in my opinion. But. Wait, is, is there is there any any weapon that you think is is doing way better or way worse than it should? When you look at like if you look at the the numbers on the gun, is there anything that just doesn't add up? Uh, the PDW, uh, which is the SMG from uh, Jackal. Uh, this weapon has like 11, 20% pick rate at best, and it doesn't perform as good as the C70, uh, C7A, E? Yeah. C, C7E. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it doesn't perform as good, and yeah, it just shouldn't. I mean, it has less recoil, has more ammo, better ADS time. So Yeah, that still counts it. as an SMG, right? Yeah. So it has the SMG uh, ADS time and exactly. ACOG as the only gun. Or- Exactly. Except for the MP5. Are the stats just bad exactly. compared to the C7E, or are they actually bad for attacker weapons? Uh, compared to the C, uh, C7E, okay. yeah. Because that, uh, compared to other weapons, it's, it's a bit low. Uh, it's near average. But it, it doesn't have as, uh, as much uh, exposure as other weapons. Um, otherwise, I, before that, uh, before uh, Yana, I would have said the G36C. It's, I mean... It, Sure, it's going up ahead uh, against the uh, R4C, but the stats are pretty similar to the R4C right now. We're talking about uh, 0.77 uh, uh, KD on the R4C, and on the G36, it's 0.75. So it's really similar. But Yana now gives a more exposure to the uh, G36C. So, Did she hurt or improve the stats? Huh? Did she hurt or improve the stats of the G36 overall? Uh, I, I have both uh, s- a set of uh, stats that are independent uh, of okay. another, so I can see how she performs compared to the other one. Okay. So, so I, I think uh, people on Ash with the G36 perform probably better than they think. Oh, right? yeah, totally. That, that's what I'm saying. It's uh, The stats are really similar to what we have yeah. on R4C. Uh, the fact that you can go with the angle grip or the ACOG, yep. uh, and the ACOG. It gives more options to the players, and I feel like there's a lot of comfort picks in Siege. Just like huh. I'm so used to pick this yeah. thing, and I won't check the others. Um, this can be said for I don't know uh, most most defenders. The, the, the while we're touching this, uh, the reason why I didn't get the top five worst ranks is because. I don't have the stats for that. It's just like it's 1% pick rate, 2% pick rate. Right. At the end of the day, it's not important. It's just significant data. Exactly. Right. So, yeah, people play a lot the same weapon that they, and they don't really try the, the other options. Are you able to clarify on it uh, with, with attachments? Because I feel like every single patch, we have someone yeah. saying, this attachment is better now. So we, you already explained how recall works, how attachments work, all of that. How often do you go in and like shadow change or tweak weapons, just minute little details to either fix something that maybe doesn't make it in, or does it just generally not happen and it's just placebo? I usually avoid doing anything that could have an impact and not telling anyone. I mean, sometimes it can happen that we have some changes that are not planned, just like uh, last uh, for the. 5.1, we had a change to the slug destruction. Mm-hmm. Instead of making it to the patch note, make it to the bug fixes. But at the end of the day, it's not a balancing change, but the destruction change. So sometimes those cases happens, but normally I don't open the attachments if I don't have to do, uh, I don't have to fix anything. I'm trying as much as possible to not change those because whenever there's a patch, uh, a TS that goes on and someone goes on Reddit and say, oh, this recall changed and it's not the same as it used to be. Well, I do spend two hours after that just like trying to figure out <laughs> counterbalances. Like, is there anything that changed? <laughs> and each TS, it's the same thing. I spend a lot of time investigating when people say, oh, this changed. 
I, I do try as less as possible to change anything on those. Sometimes it happens when we have the um, global changes, like we had on the animation refactor. Uh, I think it was on season three, mm -hmm. where it made the visual of the recall different. That that was one of the, the cases where I had to investigate a lot and try to understand. I think what I was did going a video on. on that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I remember. Um, waking up in the morning and just like, oh, well, he did clear up some stuff about the SMG-11 and the perception of the players about that. Because those kind of ch the, the, the changes, like the animation like that, we play with those for a long time. And at some point, we lose the sensibi sensibility of what exactly changed in the micro. So, yeah. I guess that was a good example, because if I remember correctly, the pattern was the exact same, right? Like there was it's no difference, the, but yeah. but just the fact that the scope wobbled a bit more, or your yeah. player model, like even if he holds the gun at a different, like one degree different angle, people will notice. Exactly. Um, but but the bullets go the same place on the wall. Exactly. Um, but but there was a lot about that with people saying, well, now you got to use this attachment, or you got to use this attachment, and it's just, to my understanding, like the attachment values are the same no matter what. Yep. They just. Yeah, like percentage wise they apply different to different guns because different guns have different base stats and that's it exactly yeah okay that clears up a, a lot of stuff that's why i'm Since... suggesting usually the uh flash hider on you don't know what to use use a flash hider it backs the most things you get a little bit of everything <laughs> exactly <laughs> since we're talking attachments i have made a note one question i do want to ask you because um we had jb on the podcast um, a couple of episodes ago and um, Alex brought up a point about how some of the attachments are just objectively better like there's for some there's no reason to use them at all and JB mentioned that's something that's been looked at and um, it's something I've seen reported before that attachments could be a way of giving us uh, a bit more customization in the game um, so one thing, I'd like this is this is more of a request, okay, <laughs> than a okay. question. Um, well, I get the. I would, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, um, I would like I'd like to go one further than what um, Alex said. Like, I would like almost for attachments to have ups and downsides, right? Because currently the downside is that by selecting one attachment, you can't use another. So if I have compensator, I can't have the benefit of what the muzzle brake would give me. But I think if we're going to potentially or have some sort of rework of how attachments work in the game, I'd love it to like, okay, I could have, I'm just going to throw this out there, a box magazine, but maybe I have slower ADS time or like a bit more recoil because of the weight of it, or like I could throw different things on the gun that have pros and cons that I have to like really think about to, you know, why I'm putting them on there. Because at the moment, um, there isn't typically a downside, although, no, yeah, there isn't typically a downside, is there, to putting barrels and that on your gun. So that's more of a request. I don't know how much you can talk about that stuff because I'm guessing it's all a little bit on the down low. Well, what you're suggesting is most likely having a lot of meaningful choices. It's just like right now, you don't have a meaningful choice. You you take the, the you take the attachment that you think fits the best, and since the description sometimes it's not the, the easiest to understand, you're just like, oh yeah, this affects recall. I'll put this one. Um, so yeah, totally. We 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 want to go and do something that is meaningful choices. The currently when you select a loadout, it's not always e. Well, like, like like I mentioned, you always go for default. You don't challenge you what whatever you feel like. Um, feel like playing. That's why we have ninety eight percent pick rate versus two percent pick rate on some weapons. Uh, it's a challenge that we are trying to tackle. And when at the SI they mentioned that we want to do more options for every player, I feel like giving more meaningful player uh, choices to the players is one way to go uh, and affecting all the player base. So yes, working on those kind of stuff can't go into much more details. Fair uh, enough. But uh, totally aware that there's a lot of improving to do on the meaningful choices in the loadout section. I mean, I would I would get a real kick out of like ha being able to tweak what stock I want to put on there and all that sort of stuff. I mean, that might be a little bit much, but I would get a real kick out of something like that. Bless the people that had to remake skins yeah, if that ever happens. That well, yeah, Ooh. exactly. Yeah, exactly. You have to be careful about yeah. the, the skins and everything because they include some uh, grips and some... Well, if you if you look at the MP7, it's just like 
the grip is integrated in the the model. So when they ready the skin, they covered the the grip. So changing the position of the grip is not something that is easily done, because we I, wanted to do, go the same way as the uh, the P10, where you see that the default stock having a different position reflecting what grip you selected. But since it's it, it wasn't done with that in mind, well, the skin's kind of got. I, I, there. I think there's some sort of charm to Siege not having that like the immense amount of customization either. Uh, and and we don't end up with like seventeen different versions of an AK with different rails on. And I play a game where you can edit like everything on the gun as well, right? Like you can put a different charging handle on if if you want that. I know uh, the one you're talking about. Yeah, and, and while while all of that is amazing as a gun nut, when you when you play the game for like the competitive aspect or or the the real five v five experience, all all I'm looking for is a good reason to choose one over the other. With attachments, uh, so when when you say meaningful choice, it's it's the same thing, right? Like if I if I put extended barrel on and make my gun almost thirty uh, percent longer, so I get spotted around the corner, there has to be a, a proper reason for that to be worth it. Um, and and when it comes to like compensator flash hide on muscle break, I don't care if they do what they do in real life. That's not not important. They just have to have a a, a real good reason to be there. So I always, and it has to be explained in game, of course, to us, so we know why we're picking it. Um, so it's it's not the the guessing game because I I feel like that happens a lot now. But you cleared up a lot of the the attachments and how recall actually works. So I hope that helps with uh, with some decision making there. That fall crossed my mind too as well because I was thinking about that because like you could have fifteen different attachments, right, and then. Uh, ultimately, in two or three months' time, it will all filter down from the pro league, and then everyone will know. Well, most of the time, this is probably yeah, this is probably so. All of that work to create ten different barrels you can put on the end of your gun, and ultimately, everyone's going to run with one or two of them. Yeah, well, it's. Uh, I feel like it's a long process. Uh, if you go, if we go back to the weapon themselves, we. Can talk about the DMRs, how they get buffed each season or half. And no one ever cares. Bless. <laughs> just like they're trying to get better. It's just trying to make them have a spot where they actually. Oh, I want to play the long range engagement and cutting rotation. Well, I, I'll take a DMR, even though if it's a fifteen percent of the time or ten percent of the time, just the thought. Oh, yeah, I'll take a weapon that is better in long range. At least it's a good choice. Uh, we we do have some examples that uh, on weapon loadout that uh, are good. Well, I would say initial uh, meaningful choices. Uh, if you go uh, with the Nomad, we almost have a 50-50 in the pick rate of the ARX against the uh, AK-74. But you you usually do this choice once or twice. You just like you, you don't go back and forth in between both of the weapons. But uh, those are a good example of actually having a choice. To I do. think, but they're super nice because they're like polar opposites mm. as well, right? You have a massive magazine, a little bit slow fire rate, a worse recoil, and then you have the the speedy kill demon, but almost no bullets. Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. It's, yeah, it's super nice. Let's throw Mozzie in there too. Probably Mozzie, choice. The, the choice between the commando yeah. and the Roni is a real choice to me as well. Um, that's something I still struggle with, like because you know I I I, I like to hear I, that. the commando is like super solid. But that Roni man, when you use that, it just feels like wow. I'm just deleting people. But I also kind of feel like the Roni's a down machine. Like I feel like I put a lot of people down, but not out with that gun. And then I'm out of magazine. I'm out of rounds. I have to change the magazine by that time. There's somebody else coming, and yeah. So I, I definitely do. That's one of the ones that stick out to me as like a real choice. I I want to like real quick. I want to talk a little bit about the ACOG as, as part of like the weapon attachments, you know, yep. we're talking about, and obviously there's probably no weapon attachment in the game that gets as much attention as the ACOG. A recent example would be, um, Maestro and the Alda. And yep. I'm, I, I gotta say, I'm pretty shocked that the Alda wasn't listed in the top five defender weapons there. Um, so did the ACOG have a big effect on that? W would it have been there w previously when the ACOG was attached to it? Um, you know, what kind of effect did the ACOG have on it? What, what, do you, what are you thinking? Why isn't the ACOG, why isn't that in there? Because, I mean, statistically, you could make the argument that's the best defender weapon. So this, uh, on stats, yeah. But uh, you have to remember that most of the time you're sitting in on the site 
watching your maester threats. You're not picking fights like Jaeger or Vigil right. would do. So obviously the, the stats will be a bit lower. Uh, before we removed the ACOG on Plat Plus, uh, it was 0.63 uh, kills per round. So a big chunk uh, difference compared to the, what we have on Jaeger. Uh, if we crunch the numbers and we talk about the difference between now and then, we're talking about zero uh, minus zero point zero seven kills per round. Wow! So not much. Which is not yeah. a lot. That's exactly. And the key D didn't change. So it's still at one. I honestly thought it would have gone up a little bit because, like, when you say that you you sit on site, one thing that often happens with anchors and why it's so difficult to look at the numbers there is that you're already either you're either winning massively or you're down massively. Right. Exactly. So, so if you're two people on site and you have five people pushing you, you are way more likely to get at least one kill than anyone else was during that entire time because everyone's flooding in on you, right? Or you're already winning, which means you get no kills mm -hmm. because the rest of your team is, has done it for you. Um, it's yeah, like the idea the, of playing behind a box, whether you're three armor or uh, three speed. If you're playing behind a box and the only thing that can get shot is your head, well, then your armor didn't impact much. So it, it's hard to like look at that number and then then know what exactly that tells exactly well you can compare rook and doc i mean yeah. doc is usually the one looking for fights uh, <laughs> every window possible uh while rook stays a bit more on the site and in the stats it shows that he gets less skill even though it's the same gun same attachment same everything so you just blew my mind do you guys remember when we talked about why rook was so much further than doc and uh, as on, far the, as win rate? on the metric, uh, as far as window, yeah, uh, I thought it was solely because of armor, but I mean, it makes a sh it makes a ton of sense if it's because he's actually just more on site and not looking for fights as much. I mean, yeah, I, but I mean, isn't his K what's what's his KD? What's Rook's KD compared to uh, Doc's? It, it's similar, okay. to be honest. It's just a bit lower. Okay. Uh, but lower kills per round. It just probably the big difference between yeah, Rook, and, lower, yeah. Rook and Doc is kills per round, not KD. Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. And then win rate. Oh uh, yes. Obviously. Rook has a massive win rate over Doc for some reason. Which uh, I mean is, is probably both playstyle and armor rent. Right? Yeah, and passively benefiting your whole team. Yeah. Without yeah. Hmm. Um one one more question on attachments, if you don't mind. Um optics. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of the Russian ones. Is there a reason why they're not available to the other operators? Uh, the, why the other uh, optics aren't available to the Russian operators? Is there some reason for that? Is it, uh, is it a cosmetic reason on the guns or? Mo uh, mostly, uh, authenticity, uh, Russian operators getting Russian optics. Uh, it was mostly the draining factor for this and, I thought you might say that. Can I put a yeah, counter argument to you about that? Um, just maybe. just <laughs> hypothetical, because I just want to put this out there. Because they're special forces, maybe they could just use whatever they want. They're all friends on the same team. So, like, uh, you if, could say that about guns as well. Yeah, like special forces though don't use standard issue weapons. They use like exactly. whatever they want. Like Navy SEAL doesn't have to use what M4 or whatever. They can use what they choose so yeah, yeah the, 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 that's why i was like the, that's why i was like on the maybe side of, uh, uh, okay. because totally those are professionals and they use what they prefer so it was challenged as of today uh like i mentioned during the um, the six when we're, we're talking about the debris and the barricades there's a lot of things that are done in siege that are for authenticity and realism and slowly, but I, I, I would say slowly, but surely we're trying to filter out, is it really mandatory that it behaves like that? Uh, we're challenging those things and making sure that we get the better options and not just like, oh, it works like that. So. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, y you, can, you can say it was for authenticity to start with, but then, then I guess the counter argument would be the four car batteries in your back pocket when you're bandit, right? It's like realism, it, like realism, one hundred is, is 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 never is is never worth it. I get it from an art style and all of that to start with. That makes complete sense. Um, I I guess more what I'm looking at is like 
you, you don't do the same with like attachments, for example, like uh, muscle attachments, for example, because we all know that suppresses up your muscle velocity. They don't lower it. So it, it wouldn't like it wouldn't inflict less damage. Right. But for game balance, it's more important that it does that because you remove threat indicators, all of that stuff. And as you said, it's probably not fun taking full damage from a gun you don't even know is being shot. So, yeah, I, I don't know. There's There's got to be some balance to it as well when you look at a, a sights. I mean, you're slowly adding uh, hollow sights to pretty much everything. Uh, what yep. was it? Uh, Cav got it and today. And Frost got it before. Yeah, Cav got it today. And Frost, Frost got, got it, it earlier, yeah. So, so. so those, those were design choices that were made a long time ago. Just like how <laughs> yeah, just wide. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and the, the something that was just like, oh, well, at this point, how the engine works and everything, that's something that we can easily do now. So let's give them. And there's no reason why they, there was no uh, all on those weapons, beside balancing reason back back, back then. Do you see any performance difference at all on, on sites, or does that not, not really matter? Mm, not really. I, I can see the, the, the pick rate of each of those sites, but uh, there's no... Uh, even though the, the Olo feels more comfortable, uh, you know, the, the Razer Olo, the, the one yeah. on, uh, it feels more comfortable, but I don't have the stats to straight compare it to a weapon that wouldn't have it. Yeah, that makes sense. Watch so me play now, your say <laughs> performance. <laughs> <laughs> could, could I ask uh, you to dig into your stats again? I think this might be kind of interesting to, to see. Is that compare the CZ to the SMG-12 on Vigil um, and how different do those guns perform? Um, and, and, and where I'm going with this, would it actually be a, um, buff to Callie if she was to get the SMG 12 over the CZ? Uh, there's not a lot of difference, but the stats are not as accurate. Like I mentioned, the pick rate, if we talk on vigil, it's 62% of, uh, of the time, the SMG 12 over 38% of the C70. Uh, the kill rate is 0.1 difference. Uh, so, hmm. so kill purpose, it's can really I, simple. Can I yeah, clarify sure. that? It, that doesn't necessarily mean Vigil's using that weapon, though, does it? That just means exactly. it's it's exactly. on him. So you have to be really careful with that flank. Yeah, exactly. Those stats are uh, are hard are harder to use because you, if you go with all the kills he has, well, what's the exposure right. he is using the weapon? Yeah. So, and the kitty would go up a lot if you just like say, oh, he got a kill with this weapon, but then he swaps to the other weapon and dies while he's reloading. What about accuracy? Do you have that stat available? I mean, can you look at the accuracy between the SMG-12 and the CZ? Like bullets landed? I do okay. not have this okay. close. All right, that, that, no worries. I'm, I'm sorry for throwing that on you. That's also, diff that's also difficult because it, it, yeah. you'll use them in very, very different ways, right? Yeah, well... Like in terms of when also, you shoot and... It, it's it's very difficult to figure out, with, especially with guns that have that like amount of spray. Some guns you might just only use when you're closer. Like no one's spraying at people far away with SMG-12 or CZ, for example. Um, you have to keep in mind the accuracy value does not is mm, not super meaningful in siege. Uh, yeah. If you're trying to open a hole or just trying to open, open a barricade, mm -hmm. yeah, what am I doing with those those hits? So it's not something that we use a lot. That's why I'm just like, hey, I don't have it closed because yeah. we don't use it at all. Okay. Obvious. Well, I have one uh, one last question before I... Uh, DMRs, when you're trying to buff them, how close is the margin for you completely making them brokenly overpowered and everyone running them instead? Because you, you mentioned that it would be nice to have you know, one player going and say, I'm, I'm going to bring a DMR for the team. But it must be very, very, very close when you get to that point that you might as well just bring DMRs for body shots um, on, on players. That must be a terrifyingly close number you have to tweak for that with, with damage or whatever it might be. Because we don't uh, have the high fire rate on attack, right? Uh, compared to, to defense in general. Oh, exactly. Uh, it caps at 850, uh, 855 or something like that. Um, so, yeah... That's why we, for the MRs, we're going super slowly. Uh, if I go with the same kind of story that didn't happen, uh, I, at some point I really wanted to buff the uh, semi-auto shotguns. Um, 
I felt like they didn't have the space that they should have. I mean, they're not good for combat because they're shotguns, and they're not good at destruction because they're not pump action shotguns. If you uh, if you notice, the pump action shotguns are better at destruction. So I went ahead and uh, even had a pro workshop with the uh, the changes to the semi uh, semi auto uh, weapons, and the, the the pros completely told me that you shouldn't do that. I mean. It's, <laughs> It's not fun to go against something that shreds you instantly like that. I mean, we all have the uh, one shot, that shot mechanics, and players perceive it a bit less frustrating than being, oh, well, I got randomly sprayed and I died. The, the feeling that you, you would get by getting killed by a shotgun each round, if you remember the first year well. Let's not, uh, yeah, exactly. let's not go back into Super 90. Exactly. So that's why I'm going really slowly with the DMRs and trying to figure out what's what can they bring that the other weapons don't bring. And right now, I'm looking more at the uh, destruction side. That's why I added the edges, more utility on the weapon, mm -hmm. destroying a line of sights in five bullets. You can cut off rotations e easier with those weapons. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, uh, you don't want to go at the 86 damage like the, um, the TCS was and just killing people, well, killing two person rotating at the same time because it has full penetration oh. because you landed two shots in the body. Yeah, let's try to avoid that. Good stuff. I, I, I really appreciate you coming on, Matt. This has been enlightening and uh, really fascinating to talk about and just kind of pick your brain and get access to some of this information that nobody's really ever had before. So thank you so much. I hope you'll come on again down the road. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, you know, again, this is the fourth episode in a row that we've been able to pick the brain of a dev that actually works on the grain. So I want to give a huge shout out to Ubisoft and, you know, all the people that made this happen, um, including, you know, Epi, everybody, uh, you and everybody else who came on from the dev team. Um, you know, it means a lot that you're willing to come on and interact with a community like this. Hopefully, for the viewers, we've been able to answer some of the long-standing questions you've had, and you know, give you more insight into the people who who will work on the game and what's going on behind the scenes. Um, that's really been the goal of this. So, with that said, I guess we'll kind of wrap up here. Do you guys have anything else? Just thanks very much for coming on, and we'll link the Twitter. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we'll link your Twitter. Sounds good. Uh, thank them. you guys to. Uh... You have brought me here. I mean, it's super interesting, and I I really enjoy spending time discussing weapons. Uh, I was counting on you guys to actually stop me. <laughs> um, so yeah, actually love talking about those kind of stuff. And thank you for doing what you do for the community. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. And thank you. Uh, again, we'll have Matt's Twitter link down below. Uh, keep up the good work, Matt. Really appreciate it. And uh, for everybody watching, we will see you next week. Ciao.